Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So could we be in for that correction we were waiting for? But this time it seems to be fueled by Evergrande and the fears of contagion in China. So we've seen that the FTSE 100 is down after open. We've seen the Hong Kong, Hong Kong index was down and we can see the futures in the United States, S&P, Dow and Nasdaq are all down over 1%. Now, this is all around fears of contagion for Evergrande. Now, for those who aren't familiar, Evergrande is the second largest house builder in China. And they're about to default on about 300 billion, yep, that's billion dollars of payments they are due. And this is the most significant test that China's financial system has ever faced. And it's got the wider investment community and world worried about the fear of contagion. In fact, some are even calling this China's own Lehman Brothers uh, problem. Now, this has got people debating about whether China are going to bail out Evergrande. Some are saying yes, some are saying no. But we need to go back and look at the context a little bit more. So we know um, Xi Jinping is looking to bring down the debt-ridden culture in China. So to put this into context, China has a debt problem, right? Now, in 2007-2008, China had to fuel 6.5 trillion of debt to raise GDP by 5 trillion yuan. 6.5 trillion led to 5 trillion in uh, GDP growth. Now, in 2015 and 2016, they had to spend 20 trillion OK, so more than 3x, 20 trillion to get the same 5 trillion uptick in uh, their GDP. So you can see they're getting a diminishing return on the debt. So they need to figure out a more sustainable way of growing their GDP. Now, naturally, this has got analysts saying, look, China can't have it both ways. They, they set really high GDP growth expectations. Then they wonder why they need to then leverage up so heavily in order to meet them. They should set a more realistic uh, GDP growth forecast based on the underlying growth of the economy, which makes complete sense. Now, coming back to Evergrande, they are due to default on two key bank repayments tomorrow. And that is what that is one of the reasons why the market is super jittery right now. Um, you remember with the Lehman Brothers uh, case uh, many years ago, we saw that we were led to believe that the government thought that, uh, that the government will consider them too big to fail, but at the last minute they let them fail. And could that be the case here? Could this be an example of Xi Jinping using Evergrande as um, a precedent? Could he say, look, if you guys continue like this, I'm not going to save you. Now, on the other hand, if he does go in and save them, he set a precedent. And therefore, maybe this won't change any behavior. Maybe the other uh, large property and house builders and other companies will continue to raise uh, loads of debt and be highly leveraged because they've proven now that they bailed out Evergrande. So we're in a bit of a tricky political issue here. Some have, uh, have indicated that they believe they will keep Evergrande uh, alive to some extent in some sort of uh, uh, a very um, skeleton way and they believe that they'll do that even if it's just to finish off the 1.4 million homes that they've already pre-sold so, so you've got to remember with Xi Jinping he does not want thousands of angry protesters and we've already seen protesters uh, coming out and protesting at this situation he does not want them protesting and demanding their money back that is not a good look for his uh, for his reign, right? So he's going to want to, at the very least, ignore his suppliers, but folk, uh, ignore the creditors, but at least focus on getting these houses built. Now, like I said, that will mean that suppliers are going to be next on the pecking order, right? They're very unlikely to then uh, see much returns. However, Evergrande have also said that they're willing to pay off some of the debt in houses. So they're saying, why don't you just take some of our assets, these half-built homes, or even some of these complete-built homes, which we've not managed to sell, um, and we're not sure whether the suppliers have agreed or not. But the problem with doing that is if you start offload, let's say you owe someone 100, uh, let's call it uh, 100 billion of debt, and you, you give them houses, assets worth 200 billion, right? So even if they were to accept that, uh, once you've accepted it and all this contagion happens, maybe that 200 billion worth of houses might fall to 100 billion. See what I mean? So there can be a lot of confusion around this 
Um, and it's not an ideal solution. And that's what some people are most scared of. The worst case scenario here is for a fire sale like that of uh, Evergrande's asset. If they put a fire sale of all the housing that they own, that's really going to undermine the market and start creating a, a domino effect of pushing prices down and therefore the whole economy and even the global economy, right? So we know any downturn in China will have a significant impact on commodities as they're considered, you know, they have the status as the largest consumer of commodities, minerals and metals. Um, and we also know that in 2015, when China had their debt uh, concerns around there, um, that led to a really broad based correction. And I think that's what we may see here. I mean, coming into this month, we were already a bit jittery here uh, in the Western world around seeing a bit of a correction. We saw a couple of ticks down and we're asking ourselves, when are we going to see the next 5% S&P correction? We know Jerome Powell is speaking 22nd, 21st, 22nd, which is uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's his FOMC meeting. And we know that, we, you know, there's going to be a conversation around taper. Um, he's had his jobs figure. He's had his CPI figure. He's seen it kind of inflect down. Will he take the decision to start a taper? And a lot of people are thinking that may not, we may not be in for a September announcement. We're not going to see an announcement tomorrow for September, but maybe a November, December one. Others are saying early next year. Um, now, the FOMC are not the only ones. A lot of the other European central banks are also having these conversations right now. And you can see that the trend is that the majority of central banks are now moving towards language and rhetoric around tightening their monetary policy. So that, with this backdrop of Evergrande and the debt contagion that this can cause, uh, definitely has us prepared for a bit of a correction. So brings us to the question, what should we do? And my advice in this situation, it's not financial advice, is to have some cash ready. You really need to have cash ready for these kind of instances. So if you, you know, my, my tactic in these kind of instances, I, I don't like to keep loads of cash around, but I'll park it in Amazon or Apple or some of these bit at Google, safe plays. And when I need it, when I see a significant dip in the market and crypto, by the way, because I, I do believe this contagion is going to head over to crypto, you can already see uh, Bitcoin has tumbled down to 44 thousand uh, dollars which has I'm, I'm pretty sure has uh, uh, something to do with the Evergrande crisis and the wider contagion fears but you want to have some cash ready to buy these dips I think you're going to get some good dips here there's a lot of backdrop of uncertainty and you can almost feel that we're going to get some cheaper prices coming in and again if you have those high conviction plays which you believe in no matter what these kind of things aren't going to affect certain high conviction plays so it's a good opportunity to get into some of your favorites or top up your positions when the market takes a bit of a panic and i think you know whenever you have these kind of issues we saw it with Lehman Brothers, we saw it with a few others, they can either become very big events, in which case we need to face that anyway, or they can really quickly be a lot of fear, a lot of crescendo fear coming into an almost bit, a bit of an anti-climax, anti right? Because tomorrow, uh, the uh, Chinese Communist Party could decide, the CCP could decide tomorrow um, that we're going to bail them out. It's, not, it's a non-issue now and the market can return back to normal. So we need to be a bit vigilant. We need to be prepared. It's always good to have cash or cash-like assets ready to buy the dip if we get a significant correction. And I think other than that, we should just watch carefully, get our positions ready, keep an eye on your favorites and mark a few price points that you're willing to ladder in at based on your conviction. And then just watch. I, I mean, you know, not good news for crypto. We can see that falling. Uh, stock markets not looking too positive. And I think this is... Um, you know, it's just a lot going on at the moment. We have the weaker jobs figure. We saw inflation is still high, but kind of inflecting down. We know the FMC, FOMC is meeting tomorrow. And then this Evergrande issue on top has everybody with a jitters. So there you have it, guys. That's what's happening with the Evergrande crisis. And we'll see you in the next video.